Without being arrogant or anything like that, from straight from the start of the year, if we had an ambition to win the All Ireland, and it was simple as that. Even all the games in Watford now, the way it's gone, there's no easy game. No easy game. No easy. To progress and be successful, you need evolution. A score was so precious. When you're in Crow Park, you can't hear a whole lot. It's, it's, a, it's a weird place to go and play in. We probably didn't play our best and we got through some games without playing well. It was definitely a challenge. It was a challenge for everybody. The margins are so small and just to try and get on the right side of those margins is, is really, really tough. Very exciting day for Waterford and, and especially for Belly Gunner. No stone is left unturned in the club's pursuit of winning championships. We kept going and we never stopped believing really. Just say we're going to go out of here having given everything we have. You know, we really had to dig deep to get out of that game. Yeah, something that we've never ever done before. The Gunners, of course, hope to win their very first, and indeed Walford's very first All Ireland title. Still kind of get goosebumps talking about it. Louis scoops to Peter Hogan. What can they do? The time is against them, but is the scoreboard against them? Ball goes on inside. Harry Ruddle in space inside the D. What's Harry going to do? Takes a shot. The club was founded in 1954, but when a man from County Louth came as teacher to Ballygunner School, the origins of the club began. Jimmy McGinn knew nothing about hurling, but he proceeded to learn all the skills of the game and subsequently the implementation of the skills. And after a few years, the school participated in primary schools competitions and with some success, and indeed with quite an amount of success. So much so that in 1954, the club was founded. Remarkably, they fielded one team, a minor team, and remarkably as well, they won the county minor championship in the first year of its existence. I think there's something special here. I think if you look back, I know it was drilled into me by my dad when I was younger that, you know, the club was founded for the people and to give the people an identity about where they came from. And Mr. McGinn's vision was that. And what I really love about it is that spirit of the people and the connection to the people is still there. What Valley Gunner is in my eyes is the spirit and to give the people an identity and a camaraderie that will row in behind each other wherever we go in the world. And I think that's what community is all about. Obviously starting out myself, I think it was four. I started to train at a gala day and from there on we just kept going and kept going and that, that was it really. The likes of under nine and ten tournaments we used to go off to, I remember one in particular in Ballyduff, we went off to Kerry and that and some great memories made and... Older brother Jack kind of put the hurley in the hand, um, got me started I suppose around under fours or fives, came up with uh, Tiggs, Dad, Paul, uh, Packy, JJ, Lionsy, people like that and all, they had us all the way through up to mine I suppose. Look everybody's in the same boat of that age, you don't really know what you're doing but you, you start to pick it up and look the coaches and that are great within the club and they always have been and um, we've always had people to look up to as well so it was great coming up training and some big um, names training you. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of different things. Firstly, you know, when you when you grow up, it's probably something special that you can put so much time into with a, with the same group of lads. Like I'm 31 years of age now, I was probably up here more than 25, 26 years now, and still have my, most of my best friends probably have played hurling with me the whole way growing up, and some of them are still playing with me. But it's just the people, really. It's a great spirit up here in the club, and you know, whether you're young or you're old, everyone we're all the same. We come up here, we're all rowing the same direction. That's a special feeling. It's a special place that we have here, and we're so lucky to be from Ballygunner. It's um. You know, just see see the development that's taking place over the last few years, and for the young, for the next generations, and that is, it's really special. And all, there's a lot of credit due to the people who are driving it at the top of the club. The 
The development of the young people in the club has always been paramount in Ballygunner. And a lot of the facilities that we have in the club are geared towards this development. The club is fortunate that so many players of the 90s are involved with our younger players. And this coupled with parents who have come in from other parts of the county and other counties uh, get involved in the structure of the club. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. I remember just the top field here when I was seven years of age picking the stones off it and you know even the bottom field there was no dressing rooms and we used to have an old Bell Lines container and there was a hole in the roof and I remember even the city clubs coming out and they were laughing and making fun of us and we were just kind of a bit different but if you think of where we've come from since then it's phenomenal. The work of all the community and the people. The facilities are massive, you know, I remember looking out in front of here I'd say there's the, when I grew up there was the old clubhouse was there, it wasn't as big as it was now and this pitch I think nearly every single thing over the course of the last as long as I can remember 20, 25, 26 years has changed um, and that's you know in particular last year we got the lights you know we were training long into the winter and that normally we would have traveled maybe to Carlo or we would have been going into the WIT but I think once we came out of water for last year and the light was fading we could come up here in Valley Gunner and it was great because people who were around and that you know they could come up during the week and they could see the team train and there was young lads around who obviously wouldn't be going to Carlo or out to WIT you know during the week and that kind of thing which was I think that actually made a huge difference from a playing perspective but I think even for the future of the club you know, for the younger people you know, what's been done here is fantastic like you see the alley how well it looks you see the arena you know it was named after it's named after a good friend of ours who we lost when we were younger you know, all, you know it's a special place to come up to and the big thing is too like that they're continuing to progress you see even the walkway for the community it's not just people playing hurling here it's everyone in in, in Valley Gunner you know can avail of the facilities and that and you know it's important that the club I suppose continues to develop and continues to try and get better because you know you need to evolve because a lot of we're not the only club in Warford or, or around that are kind of progressing in this manner but yeah look it's I think anyone who comes up here, here even who might be from outside of Waterford or outside of Valley Gunner they're, they're, they always do comment on how, how well the place is looking and it's a credit to the people who put the plans in place and also to the people who maintain it in such a good manner. Since the new year there this, the addition of the new gym is absolutely massive and it's so tailored to, uh, to the needs of the game now uh, say the last the gym previously you might only had one rack and fellas might have been queuing for a rack or whatever but now you've there's about six or seven of them in there and fellas you can really have team sessions on there at the moment and that's huge and it's all tailored to the game now so the gym is massive obviously the the ball the ball out of here and what they're doing the new training pitch to the side is massive and then say from a community point of view there's there the Ballygunner 365 and the walk circle all the way around is huge to get other people involved and just even outside of a hurling point of view, we get everybody as a community. And what we have here is we have community, social connection. We have fantastic facilities in a gym. We have top class coaches who've competed at the highest level. We have just good people who are looking after people and look after the development of a whole person as a child as well. So I think we have all the raw ingredients there to develop. Whereas before, you know, we were struggling for numbers when I started, we're struggling for facilities, we're struggling for coaches and the people that were there did incredible work because they laid the foundation. Whereas now because of success we have that in abundance. So it's just we're just really grateful to have that for the younger generation coming through. Good evening. All across Europe and much of the rest of the world, COVID nineteen infections are on the rise. I want to speak to you tonight about our country's ongoing battle against the virus. Everyone in the country has been asked to stay at home with exercise permitted within a five kilometre radius of your home. The GA have announced a cessation of all activity, training and games until March 29th at the very least. Well, that was really the toughest thing is that we generally didn't have a clue when the championship was going to take place and that. And I think initially, like everyone was just so concerned about COVID and that, and kind of hurling was pushed back, pushed to, to one side and that. You know, particularly those early months around end of February, March. You know, everyone was so worried that hurling was probably you know kind of secondary in a way. But then as as time progressed and we could get back out and 
lockdowns were kind of lifted or they weren't as severe as the first one, we kind of started to get back and thinking about hurling again. But It was tough, to be honest. You're so used to coming up to the pitch with the lads and everybody training together and then all of a sudden you're probably doing it in twos and threes. Even at times you're doing it on your own, it was really tough. But I suppose you just kind of had to keep the bigger picture in mind of what was coming down the line and when it was going to end. We were always saying to each other, like, oh, look, it'll only be another couple of months and we kept training hard, I suppose. But it was definitely a challenge. It was a challenge for everybody to adapt to it. But for myself, I suppose, you were just, you were thinking of the bigger picture. And we were actually lucky. I think we finished a season with Bally Gunner. We managed to get it finished. Um, and then obviously it came in, there was no Munster Club or anything, but then the inter-county season started, so it wasn't all um, bad, I suppose, for us. We were able, inter-county teams were allowed to train and stuff, so it wasn't too bad, but it was definitely a challenge for, for Ballygunner and senior team because we had such high ambitions that year of trying to go on. We were after being beaten in the Munster final and that's all we wanted to do was get back there and obviously it was disrupted. But Yeah, I think it was actually advantageous to us as a group because we're so close that we, we got into pods and we trained in pods all over the community. So, you know, we went down different places, set up our own gyms, and we really got hyper-focused on individual specific development. So, as a player, it was advantageous if you had the right mental approach, because you could focus your time to focus on one or two particular areas of your game, or your strength, or your speed, or your technical ability. And then over time, then I think as a group, we all evolved from that specific focus on our competencies, our skill sets. And I think that phase, that year, laid the foundation for what happened last year, was really valuable to us. Yeah, you see, Darren Franks and Harners and the rest, they, in fairness to them, they had a really good plan put in place and everything was, there was a great structure to everything. Everyone kind of had individual Zoom calls and we nearly tailored training to everyone. I think mentally, the, the um, you know, it was, it was probably tougher than maybe physically. Physically, we were actually using training to kind of get out and get active and kind of see some of the lads when we eventually could and that kind of thing. But I think from a Valley Gunner perspective, it was actually wasn't, um, it was really a good thing in ways because a lot of the younger players in particular had kind of a prolonged period where they could train and get stronger and build themselves up. And you know, I think lads were buying gym equipment from the start and we were lucky to get it because it was scarce at the, um, you know, as I say, the months went on and that kind of thing. But yeah, look, it was a tough time for everybody. You know, it still is, it's still lingering around and that kind of thing. So. Uh, we gained a lot of ground because we nearly trained more or more specific and we always had the, uh, you know, big goals and big dreams and aspirations so we, were, we wanted to train. It wasn't like COVID was an excuse for us to stop. COVID was an opportunity for us to really rally around each other as a community and individuals and get really good at what we needed to get good at. Mentally it was the toughest thing because you didn't know what was coming around the corner or when we were going to be back training. You didn't know what kind of shape you were in because you weren't competing against other lads. It was, it was really tough to really know where you stood and you didn't want to be coming back to train. Then when we did get together and be the unfit one, or, do you know what I mean? So I suppose there was a bit of competition with lads like that too, that we all came back in good shape then after it. So it wasn't too bad. I probably got a bit more out of lads too. People were prepared coming back to train and I wouldn't say whenever we came back, no one was too far behind it all, like, you know, people kind of stuck to what was given to them. It turned out fairly well for us because the championship, when we did get back to play, it was we were lucky to have it. We, we ended up beating Passage in, in, uh, in Welsh Park, which was, a, it was kind of a surreal day. There was no, no one in the stadium, really. Even our families weren't allowed to go to the game, but so it definitely gave us a good platform to build on for the following 2021 season. Without being arrogant or anything like that, from straight from the start of the year, we had an ambition to win the All-Ireland and it was simple as that. Um, obviously there's stages throughout the season you hit, we went, we had a tough Waterford Championship. We probably didn't play our best and we got through some games without playing well and then we kind of went into Munster, we went up to Ballier up in Ennis, which we thought would be a really tough game and we won the, we won the game convincingly. So kind of from there on we got a real confidence of, look, we're coming right at the right time here and I know we won a convince, well not convincingly in the end, but I think we played a game in really challenging conditions up at Dungarvan against Lockmore Castellani and we're a great hurling team and sometimes the, the elements can make an impact on the hurling element, you know, so we grinded that out. It wasn't hurling, hurling wasn't actually the best that day, but we just kept going and there was 
points in that game. I remember Mike Amani just running through a centre back and just blowing him out of the way. And you know, we were really Ian Kenny coming out with four, five, six balls, ten minutes to go in in atrocious conditions. And just the spirit that came from that game, I think, was was a really good turning point because it meant we could mix it at any any level with anyone at any kind of element, any weather, at any conditions. Big moments throughout any year when you get over the line, like that game against Lockmore was a massive game. I remember being in the, in the dressing room at half time and you know, we were in a, our backs were to the wall there and we, you know, we really had to dig deep to get out, get out of that game. And obviously then with, with um, COVID and stuff again, was kind of back around in terms of lockdowns and restrictions around that time. So the Lockmore game anyway, that was a huge battle um, and that was a huge, line to get over and it just showed I suppose character of the team to, to get over that day because the conditions were awful. A score was so precious and I suppose yeah showed the overall character to push on. It gave us huge confidence going into the Munster final then against Kimalik. Look there's all those games, so there's no easy game. Even the first when we met Ballyhea like you know, they're such a good team and that but they didn't maybe perform as well as they wanted it today and we probably played you know very, very well that day. But all the games and when you get out of Warford, even all the games in Warford now, the way it's gone, there's no easy game and I know it mightn't seem like that to some people if you beat a team well like we did say against Kilmanic or Ballyhea, but it's definitely not the case because the margins are so small and just to try and get on the right side of those margins is, is really, really tough. Even against Schlock Neil, uh, Schlock Neil was a big because that was a different test. We probably would not uh, experience even from like an off the ball kind of a thing. We didn't know the Ulster. I don't know the Ulster teams. I don't know they tried to get in your head. I'd say a bit more than the teams around Munster. I don't know it's just their style and uh, thankfully again still up to that challenge as well. As I said, momentum then swung into into the All Ireland series and. I suppose getting to the All Ireland for coming over Slock Neil was was a big thing for us because we were going into our first um, All Ireland final and look that's what we set out to do at the start of the year and we knew we had the panel of players to go and win All Ireland but it was just a matter of getting there it was it was the big thing for us. Yeah, it's for, I think it was a Saturday firstly, so normally like you're used to a Sunday game and you might you maybe have your own routines and that kind of stuff on a Saturday you might go you know, meet the lads for breakfast or whatever and you kind of. You know, everyone has their own pre-match routine or what they do the day before. But you know, the fact it was on a Saturday was really a good thing because it came up and you know you're in work on the Friday evening and you left and you know you're up here on the Friday night and all of a sudden then you're on the way to the match. But I think we were lucky even that the, the, we had a previous um, experience of playing up in Dublin in Parnell Park against Loch Neal too. So that probably stood to us as well because I think nothing really changed. We went to the same hotel, we stopped in the same garage on the way up, and look, I think everyone just kind of switches into their pre-match routine. They kind of just do what you're used to doing and that kind of thing. You don't have too much time to think of it. The other side of it was that there was actually, I know Bally Gunner didn't play in an Ireland club final before, but I'd say the vast majority of the team or even people involved in the background had all a lot of experience playing in Crow Park. So you know, most of the people would have been used to the dress rooms there and they would have been used to various different aspects throughout the day. You know, a lot of players would have had played in all Ireland finals very recently and that kind of thing too, which probably stood to us. But you know, look, of course you're nervous. It's a massive day for the club, but you kind of, Naturally, you're just so focused on what you're doing each day before that you don't want to get too much time to think about it. It starts whenever you leave here, get on the bus, like the whole the whole day is so exciting. It's unreal, you're getting on a bus with your team and you might go, you get your your meal, you're still all together and I, I don't know, there's something special about it, just travelling together. It was just pure excitement to be honest with you, it was getting on the bus with your best friends, heading up to Crow Park your family and that with you, it was, it was unbelievable, like, you know, and you still kind of get goosebumps talking about it, it was, it was a really special feeling. And then obviously before the game, a few of the nerves started to kick in, but the morning of the game was just pure excitement of getting on the bus like we always do, but we're heading up to Crow Park this time. You know, you just want to get out there and get into the first ball and just trust yourself then to just embrace it. And just that, and maybe there was a, an element of embracing the occasion too, so just even going in. I suppose when you're that bit older, you have the experience and being there before, you just want to suck it all in. And you go in in the bus and you see, you know, you see your teammates, your club, and just the red and black one on the streets. It's just immense. And I think when you get to experience all that in your life, it's just a gift. Good afternoon and welcome everybody live here to Crow Park. This is the eagerly awaited Ireland Senior Club Final. Warford Valley Gunner taking on Club King King Shamrocks from Valley Hale, who are hoping to win a, a record ninth All Ireland title. A three in a row already in the bag.
Ball is in the All Ireland final of 2022 underway. Referee blows his whistle for half time. A very entertaining half time. No goals, but lots of action and lots of great scores. Going in at half time in Dorland, we were very calm. We kind of we knew we were playing good hurling, but we were after having a few few bad ways throughout the game. And yeah, I actually think we, we performed very well in the first half too. There was lots of very good stuff about it. And like you're going up against a team like Ballyhale, like you're not going to have have it all your own way. Like I think a good piece of mind was that we it was, I thought it was very even, but we did have a few wides that were probably on character. We probably would have scored them on another day, so it could have been. Could have been even, or we might have even been a point up. But yeah, I remember we, we like we had a good look at ourselves. We we're good at that, which is obviously why we're, we have succeeded in some sense. So we we're saying like lads, we can't leave like that. Like you know, we, we had a number of wides. We we made maybe our decision making was a bit off, and I remember us calling each other out and said we're not leaving this pitch like that. Well, we can do better, and it was like mentally as well as physically it wasn't just come on let's go big kind of hoo-ha it was very kind of calm and that was it but the main message at half time was just look lads we never know when we're going to be back here and it was as simple as that to reiterate that look you have to give everything because you might never be back here there's been so many teams i'm sure playing all our club finals and they might have thought they might have come back to you after but they, did, they didn't and i think i remember one or two people in particular stood up and they said like whatever happens just we're going to leave it all out in the field now and if it's not good enough it's not good enough but we can't come off the field and not knowing that we have given everything and a huge 30 minutes for belly gunner now as a club here huge 30 minutes for this group of players and management it goes into colin finley colin finley in space in the one one must be goal He's going to score. How does Saki do it as he did all year? Ball oh, to the back. Oh, ricocheting into the back of the net there. Half break for Bally Gunner there. Philip Mahoney, Philip first time getting the ball inside to Dizzy inside. Dizzy goes yes. high. Dizzy has the ball. What's he going to do? It takes a shot. Yeah! Oh! Dizzy, Dizzy, Dizzy! Oh! What a goal by Dizzy. He was up against Smollett. The small man against the big. To score. He delivered when it was needed. And now, and now, oh, can they do it? We're back to two, of course they can. They definitely can, Kim. Back to two points. Instantly, Dizzy are just trying to get on the ball straight away and just ease yourself into the game. There was a stage probably where you could barely, you couldn't even hear what the lads were saying. It was nearly down to your, it was all down to players on the pitch ne nearly kind of. You couldn't hear the lads at the line. So we kind of just had to stick to what they had implemented with us all year and don't resort to long ball really. Well, we, one thing is we, we probably spoke about being in that situation. I know it might seem mad now, but we did we did genuinely speak about that before different games. We looked at different scenarios and if we were in a certain situation, if we were two or three points up or two or three points down, what exactly would we do? And, and we, we, we were training mentally, physically, a multi-sensory approach, visualization, meditation. We drilled that into ourselves six months previous. So when it came to that high octane, high pressure environment in Crow Park, we were just trained to do the same thing, think the same way, be in the moment. So wherever your position was on the field, you had the same process process, whether it was the 59th minute or the match or the first minute, and it really, really was drilled in. We worked through that consistently throughout the year, so I think it's just because of our training, it led us to that. It wasn't something that just happened overnight, um, and that then manifested in us doing what we always did, even though the stakes were higher. He won 17, 62 minutes. Oh, yeah, uh, heading in one minute, one minute to go, and um, we'll see what the ref gives, but um, a couple of chances to set up some attacks there, and unfortunately, they came to nothing. That last ball just scrumming out over the line. 
I mean, straight up, you look up at the board, scoreboard with 62 minutes gone, and you're thinking, oh no, like, this is going to be gone from us two points down, like, you know, and it was really tough, but in fairness to nobody showed that in their body language or the way we played and everybody just kept going. Two or three minutes goes up on the clock and I remember one ball, I think Paddy hit it out over the end line, you're thinking, you look up and you think, oh, how am I going to face into these next few weeks or whatever, and that thought did go through my mind as well. But Flicks the ball away to Peter Hogan, won back by Adrian Mullen, Mullen leaves it inside the 45, Cochran tries to get his hand on it. But they win it back, Ian Kenny, he's been outstanding today, gives it to Paddy Levy, he too has done himself proud, and he wins the ball, great play by Levy. Levy scoops it to Peter Hogan, what can they do? The time is against them, but is the scoreboard against them? Ball goes on inside, Harry Ruddle in space, inside the D, what's Harry going to do? Takes his shot, oh! 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 Harry <laughs> Ruddle! Number 17 on his back, will that back be famed out Jack Beats tonight? That jersey could be framed, it deserves to be framed, as Darrow Sullivan, that's the jig. Is it all over? The it's over. the last puck in the game. Oh my now God! It kind of all it happened so quick, I don't know to be honest. I got the ball started running and the closer I got, I was like, Jesus, if I pass it here, someone's going to get bottled up. I might have a go, to be honest. <laughs> Memory I'll never forget. I can still replay it in the head like in Everton, yeah. Something else. So when that ball hit the net then it was just sort of such a surreal feeling because you go from one one opposite emotion to the to the other within the space of five seconds and it's just the feeling after I just you know, even talking about now the hairs are sticking up in the back of my head, I can remember vividly. Four passes before the ball got to Harry. Um, but yeah, I was just standing in the middle of the semicircle and I just said I better get out of here, I'm money in the way, so I just I, I just tried to make as much space for Harry as possible and so did the other lads and look, thankfully we done that because it did open space for Harry and look, it was an unbelievable finish. Best fellow we could have had in the club running like that, he, I, I vividly remember even training games a week or two before the All-Ireland and he was doing that, his form was unreal, it was, you know, he was really starting to you know, show everyone again what he's about and you know, just to do that though, but it, it, look, I wasn't one bit surprised and I don't think anyone involved was surprised, you know, you, you might pe hear people after it saying like, where was he all year, but like he was doing that in particular, COVID probably, you know, he really made up his mind that he was going to train really, really hard and you know, that was a lot of hard work that came into it, there was no fluke about it, I've seen him do that so many times over the last six, seven years and so many people have, but yeah, just what a goal, what can you say, really? He has <laughs> heard the name of Harry Ruddle, they have now, and I'm sure Frankie King, Charlie Lepner, Pat Flynn, Pat McCarthy, Pat O'Sullivan are looking down, and of course the great Paul Foley, Gary Murphy and Niall Warren. They wore the black and red with pride. They have pride in their club. Their club are our Ireland champions. Bonded everybody as well to say that, you know, through all the dark days and community spirit, it, there's something more that we get out of it than just hurling, you know. Between two fantastic teams, and you have to say, Belly Hill, what great champions they were for the last couple of years. But this Belly Gunner team, they, this is a special, special crop of players, and they totally deserve this. They kept going and kept going and kept home, kept going. You will not get, you will not get the excitement that was thrown up here in the second half um, between between two fantastic teams. People you mightn't have seen as well in, in, in ages coming together. It was, yeah, it was like the whole community came in for one. Especially that Saturday night was a uh, day we'll never forget. Day and night we'll never forget. The homecoming was so special. No matter what happens in the future, there will never be an occasion like it, winning your first All Ireland. Championship. I look down at the crowd in front of me, a fantastic crowd, great supporters, all of them with smiles on their faces. And I picked out a few. Young Mikey Power, the third of three generations of Michael Powers, 
with a big smile on his face. Mick Gaffney, who managed the club to win five championships in the 90s, and a man who recently became very ill and who traveled to Croke Park and has since passed away, Michael Carney. I remember going in to see Michael Carney in the hospital, you know, with the cups, and Michael saying that was the best moment of my life, um, and he was the dying man. And he was only one of many people that said the same thing to me, so I think it just gave us an understanding of this is a club, it's a small little community, pocket of area in Waterford City, but it's much more than that. There's so many people, it's not just the players who've, who are playing on the day or the lads directly involved. Like, there's so many people in this club, some of them unfortunate enough to not around anymore, that have that played such a vital role in you know, us getting up to Crow Park and bringing everyone from Valley Gunner up to Crow Park and just you know, seeing the run across to the Hogan stand after the game and back across to the Cusack stand. And see the amount of black and red there is, you know, that's probably a memory that I'll take to the grave anyway. I can still vividly remember just seeing the, the amount of people in black and red and you know they were so happy and still are, but again, you have to move on and progress and move on to next year again. Yeah, it's absolutely huge. Like, it's only when you win it you realise the impact it's having on the club. It's, it's just been absolutely incredible up here the last few months. It's, you see the joy on the kids' faces, parents' faces, older people that are involved in the club for such a long time, they've never seen anything like it. It's, it's had a huge impact and I suppose on the group of players, it's, it's something we believed we could do, but it was just a matter of doing. You know, you, you obviously when you win something like that, you have to enjoy it. You know, and, and the few months after, so you know, you have to let yourself enjoy it because it doesn't. Um, so it hasn't ever happened before, and who knows, it might never happen again. But I think when you're in a group that has no ego and is all about the betterment of the team and the club and the community, that's brilliant because regardless if someone's not playing or they are playing, as you see the intermediate team are flying now as well, it just develops the whole and I think that's something special that we have to keep going. It's something we believed we could do but it was just a matter of doing um, and now we've done that which is after giving us great confidence. People have realised now that we've, we're after doing it and it shows that we can go and do it again and it's after spurring people on again and it's after giving people an even more hunger than there was last year, do you know? You know the club has to move on and continue to progress and there's going to be a lot more hurdles for the next, please God, hundreds of years come through Bally Gunner and This year is going to be very tough because every team's going to be out to get us. We're all our champions and we have to wear that on our on our backs with pride and pull our chests out and go for it. At the same time we're going into next year now and we're trying to get better again this year and show you know, teams there's probably their necks on our back as well which is so you know, it's going to be tougher again. Because you know you're only as good as your last game is an old you know, saying that people have, but I just think it's you're only as good as your next game. And that opportunity is in front of us now to maintain a winning streak that we, we're coming up against teams obviously that are going to be better prepared than last year. They've seen us, so they might be doing more about us. But there's an X on their back as well and we're going after them. Barry in the speech, like why not win five, I think he said, or something like that. And I think this group of players realise that they can do that. And I tell you, it's a testament. Harry Ruddle scoring that last goal. Fair play to you, Harry. Hey! Up that goal! Woo! Yeah, Harry Ruddle and I'm under cool under Haggis the Gunners at Bowen and Crave and Shotranona and you have Noah Shafty and I can't an idea. Crafty Stramatula at the end.